I'm LVA Executive Director Christian Anderson, and today I'm in the studio of Chip Calloway. Thanks for joining us for another installment of our Open Studio series, where we go to local artists such as Chip, investigate their studios, talk to them about their practice, and, and find just out more about what makes the city such a great and artistically vibrant place to live. Thanks for having us, Chip. Well, thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Just it looks like you're a painter, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. Yeah, I am a um, I am a DJ too. Yeah. I'm a, um, I am a all around dope person. I am. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a, a hip hop head. I am a house music fanatic. Uh, I love comic books. I am just an all around you know blur. Yeah, sneakers. I know when I walked yes, in. And, yes, yes. Uh, so you're a DJ. Uh, do you have a fancy DJ name? I go by Mad Moon Vibe. Mad Moon? Oh. Really, honestly, everything everything that I, I create goes under the moniker of Mad Moon Vibe. So, in terms of what you you sort of said with all the things that you're interested in, it seems like you're really sort of bringing a lot of different pop culture elements and sort of synthesizing them into, whether it's music or painting, but sort of the influence of all sorts of various, you know, sort of pop culture movements, whether comic books, you know, sneakers, you know, music. Mm -hmm. Art. What's the bridge for you between all of those things? Uh, it really, it's honestly music. Uh, I, um, as a kid, I was pushed into musical theater, uh, and it always was a way of calming me down. I was a very hyper kid, um, and it, music has pushed me into so many other different uh, genres and different mediums. From uh, from art because I was in Atlanta I was actually working for a music label uh, doing some graphic art for them music art um, from you know I do all my work through music I can't I cannot work without music uh, so music art um, also I'm a you know I've been a music producer for different artists like actually like you know graphic artists like music. All right, so it's always been that bridge of either music and art. So I just decided to just kind of just smash them together and just work with it using as man and vibe. So when I think about music, um, music is an interesting thing because music takes place over time, and you know, sort of traditional Western music is sort of very, very structured. Right. So how do you do? You feel like that structure of, of beats and measures and sort of chronology that we sort of think about that drives Western music. I mean, does that show up in your paintings? Are your paintings pretty structured? Or are they a little bit looser? Where's that tension between the structure that's imposed by sort of the quote unquote rules of music versus like breaking those rules? Or it's mainly a, I I use the beat and the time mm -hmm. as a um, as a conductor. So whenever you see you know one of my pieces, I'm listening to a piece and I'm doing the strokes with the beat, and it's just out of habit. I you know out of uh, I've been doing this since I was a, a little kid, and I don't really know why. Is that I just I can't create without that that beat and that that, that stroke. So um, there is definitely a, um, a, a a a deep connection when it comes down to music and art for me. And so, do you uh, do you choose the music going into the piece? Does the piece choose the music? Like the piece mainly chooses the music. Um, I ha I'll have an idea for something I'll see, you know, something that I, I want to create in my mind. And then um, it's usually three sections of music. Like with house music, you will see it in a piece like this. Uh, a lot of chop into it. Uh, and then like with hip hop, you will see more of a slow flow to it. I mean, like if a strong beat is around, I move slower. Um, with slow beat, a move faster. It's, hmm. it's, it's strange, um, but you know, just for different genres, it just depends. I mainly focus with how, with house music and hip hop, in R and B, some R and B. Some of my uh, my followers are collectors. They say that my work is like a a verse, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a rap song. So and I, you know, as I look at it, it is a verse. It's just like this one verse, but you have to know the song. So you, you, you said something just there that like you want to do all the things that you didn't have the opportunity to do when you were younger. What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, I mean, being that my, my, my father's a, a, a preacher. Uh, so, so there's a lot of things that, uh, a lot of images that I, I wouldn't allow to create 
Um, so, um, so, so now, he said, now that I'm you know, grown, I can basically create anything I want to. So it just, I still have to get past that because, like, you know, sure. I'm, you know, I'm still part, you know, it's still my family yeah. and stuff. So I sometimes I would, you know, freak out I'm like, oh, I'm going to hell if I do this. And I used to say, oh my God, they're gonna, they're gonna hate me if I do this. But you know, I'm like, I'm grown. I can do anything I want to. Do this. <laughs> so there's a story behind every single thing that I do. Um, this piece is called uh, Louisville Psycho. Okay. And, you know, when I tell people this, you know, they're like, Louisville Psycho, like, why would you call this Louisville Psycho? Well, back in the 80s, there was a street gang called the Psychos. Mm -hmm. And out of all gangs, you know, like, you know, in Louisville during that time, we didn't have, like, Bloods and Crips. We had some really colorful characters. We had the Psychos. We had a group called the um, Arabian Knights. We had a group called the Smurfs. We had a group called the Junior Smurfs. You know, which is weird. You have the Smurfs and you have the smaller Smurfs. And, but uh, the Psychos will run, run around with these Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett hats, uh, which was like hilarious. So they're supposed to be a street gang. That you're supposed to be afraid of. And they have these cool skin hats running around. So I was just like, it just doesn't strike fear in you at all. So this is a homage to the American, I mean, to, to uh, the American game, the Louisville Psychos. So for this work, what I'm hearing is that, you know, there's two things that sort of pop out to me. And so I want to sort of, one is the hat, which is obviously sort of a centerpiece of, the, of this. And your point about how it, it, it's a, a code and a symbol that they, they tried to grab onto as, as this thing. But historically, you think of kids with like, Pop guns are running around the backyard right. somewhere. Right. Um, not, not, not intimidating adults. Right. Uh, but the other thing that my eye pops to is, is the necklace collar. I mean, that's a huge pop of color and is a big eye catching part of that. Is that is there a particular part to that? It is the herringbone. Well, this is a herringbone chain, and the herringbone chain, and you know, and uh, the black culture is like it's it was like key, especially when it came down to hip hop, um, and they always had these really fat herringbone chains and I was like it just didn't make it just, it was just weird to see this hat and this huge chain at the same time I want to I want to walk over to this one if it's okay uh, so this work feels more somber and, and and heavier and like you have some concrete symbols in Louisville psycho like the hat and the chain that are that are sort of clear things that you gravitate to Whereas this has a very much of a silhouette character with some of the undefined lines, it, it feels it feels heavy to me. So tell me about tell me about this one, Shell. Uh, the name of it is Shell. Um, when I moved back uh, to Louisville like three years ago, uh, I was truly wondering like what was my next move. So this was a representation of just of just me. You said I just wanted to show me, you know what I'm saying, but I'm under the shell of all the work that I've done and now, now it's, it's, it's beginning to harden on me, so I needed to break through, so, so yeah. So you did this one about three years ago? Yeah. Wow. No, it's beautiful. So, Chip, I was, I was thinking, like, you know, the, the Louisville Psycho, you know, we talked about that those symbols had something for a group and a community, whereas this was sort of a real personal expression about how you were feeling at a given time. Um, one of the things that we always talk about in terms of authorship or for artists, that personal story, does it matter to you if the viewer or a collector or whoever buys your work, if they know that narrative? I mean, since this is sort of you on a canvas, do you, do you care if, if, if they get that same story or is this just sort of an image and then they run and they get whatever they get out of it? I feel love that they get out of it. Um, I do chuckle when I see certain certain individuals buy certain pieces because uh, they don't know the true meaning behind it. Um, but with this, it's, like, it's just me. You know, it's just it's just as simple as me. You say because a lot of people know me either as Chip or know me as Man and Why, but they they only know me through different um, genres, or different um, you know, uh, subjects, or uh, mediums. You say either it's art or music. They don't really know. And now you so so I you know, 
I try to put them together as much as possible. Um, but sometimes you know, either you love my heart and you hate my music, or you love my music and you hate my heart. So it's, it's you know it's, it's very few people just just you know connect with both. So uh, but this is just me, just how it is, just in the in the shadows. You know what I'm saying? But just constantly, uh, you know, I'm uh, thank you, Adi. You know what I'm saying? Just focusing. It, what's next? You know, even you know, I'll allow me to respectfully disagree. Like, I mean, you're 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 kind of you're more backlit than you're in the shadows. Like, I mean, the way that you compose this, there's a light source and it's hidden. It. It's it's not that you're you're back where there's no light. It's just the light is behind you, so people can't see the detail of who you are. All they see is. A, a fragment or a silhouette of who you are, but you're not really like I don't know. I mean, th this doesn't say shadows to me. It says people can't see the detail of who I really am, but they can see my right. Uh, just my presence. presence. My presence yeah. is there, but you just don't see the details. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? it's just the, the, the little final details. You just don't know about me, and then, but, you, but you still see my presence in any room. My, through my music into my heart. Um, so, so you know. Open Studio uh, Weekend is coming up, and this is part of the Open Studio program, and you know, we've had the chance to sit down and chat for a while, but when people come in to see your work, what questions do you hope that they ask you? Or how, what, if, if someone just walked in, um, what, yeah, what do you, you want to share? What do you hope that they, they sort of take out of the experience or the opportunity it's to chat more about? Of a, you know, give more of an uh, idea of, of how I create. Uh, through the music, and you know, it really, because now, I've, I've, within the last 10 years, I focused on digital. I, just, I really enjoy the fact that I can I can create a painting and not worry about it trying out. <laughs> I love that. Totally. Yeah, it's a, just an infinite amount of colors I can, I can work with without having a room full of stuff, you know what I'm saying, of things that would just mess up either my clothes, my kids' clothes, their mouth, anything else. I can just can be clean. So, well, if you want to meet Chip, if you want to see Chip, if you want to hear Chip, uh, come down to his studio in the Art Space building. Uh, it's a 328 Broadway? No, 323. 323 Broadway. Yeah.